Hey, how's it going? This is Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and the partner and CTO at Canvas. This is another video in my series of videos where I'm giving you deep dives into the capabilities of the Power App templates that we've created with Microsoft. In particular, this video is going to be diving into the Out of Office Power App. You can get this Power App exact same code that I have here and run it and use it and install it in your Power App environment too. To do so, you go to web.powerapps.com and right on the Home tab, scroll down, click See More, and then select Out of Office. This will give you a preview of the app you can look at here, and then you can also open it up in your Power Apps editor and install it to your environment. In this video, what I'm going to dive into is how we created a people picker so that you can select other folks in your Azure Active Directory from your Power App. I think the easiest way to get started with this one is just to take you on a little tour of the app up to the point where I use the people picker, and then I'll show you how we built it. So I'm going to start the Power App here. And when I start this Power App, if you've seen it before, uh, you know what's going on here. If you haven't, you can watch my demo overview video of this particular application. And my demo overview video, I show the mobile form factor of this, or the phone form factor, we also call it. But this is the tablet form factor. So when I come in, the first thing it's going to do is show me the different appointments on my calendar that I may need to set an out of office for. So I'll set one for an upcoming ice hockey tournament. And this is where I set how long it's going to take, but I'm not going to focus on these pages right now or the type or which email access I'll have. What I really want to show you is here, the people picker. So you can see it pre-populated the name of the user who is marked as my manager in our Azure Active Directory, and that's Tim. So you can see his name there. But we also have other capabilities here where we can search for anybody by just starting to type their name. So for example, if I type my name, T-O-D-D, -D, here we have all the different Todds that are in our Azure Active Directory. I can then select one and move on to my next page. Or I can look for somebody else, for example. We have a couple Alexes in the company. So then I can select one there. So as you can see, that's real quick. So let me show you now how we actually dig into the code here and implement this capability of a people picker from Azure Active Directory. First thing I'm going to do is close the player and check it out in edit mode to show you here. So I'm on the create contact info screen. You can locate this as well if you download the app and place it into your environment. And this is really how it works. What we have here is a gallery control. You can see I've highlighted it right here. And this is actually what implements that people picker that we saw drop down right there. You'll notice in my items property here, the first thing I do as I see is text input two underscore one. What's its text value? If it's not blank, then I'm going to proceed. So that's this text box right here. Notice it has a value of contact user assigned to it. Once we pick a user, we're going to set them equal to this variable, and that's going to show their name there. So after we see if that's not blank, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, is contact user equal to what was in there? If they are equal, then there's no sense in going to do a search for that user. We know someone's already typed their name and picked it. However, if you type in something different than what's already set as the contact user variable, then we're going to go off to Office 365 Users Connector and call the search user method. Then we're going to pass in the search term, which is the actual text we saw before in text input 2 underscore 1. That's all there is to it. The next thing that you'll notice about this is that because this is a gallery and this is my items collection it means that 
Every time I type in something new there, that call to Office 365 user search user is going to execute. And that's why we are going to see that items collection update as the gallery update. So if I back it up, even here in design mode, I can type in T. And now it's pulling up all kinds of different people who start with T. Add the O to it. Now we're down to just Todd's. Add Todd B-A-G. Now we're down to just my accounts in the Azure Active Directory. So again, here you can see if I pull it down again at the top, really the piece that is executing that search is the Office 365 users dot search user and whatever I type in there. Now, if we take a closer look at the gallery, we can see that it has a custom data source defined. And that is because we programmatically created the items collection. We've picked the title layout, so we're only displaying one column, and that's the user's name here. And then within that, Office 365 users, when we make that search user call, gives us all these different things that we can pull from about that user. In this case, we've chosen display name, and that's why that appears there. If I chose something else like job title, then I could go search on uh, uh, users and just put all their job titles in here or something like that if that's what I chose to do. So that's a real quick way that you can implement this functionality. One other thing that I'd like to show you about how we actually set the variable equal to the name of the one you select in the people picker is over here. Now this is a rectangle, and if you've watched my video on the transparent rectangles, you can see how we use this. We lay the transparent rectangle over top of all the controls inside of here, the separator as well as the text value that displays our names. Then when a user clicks on this transparent rectangle, this is where we go and set the variables contact user. This item display name is what we set it equal to. This item is the currently selected item in the gallery. So we're going to display its display name and set that equal to the contact user variable. Then we have the contact user email. So that's again the selected item, their mail property gets you their contact user email. So that means when I go play the app and I select a user, I just clicked on that transparent rectangle and it set those properties. So now that those properties, or I should say variables, are set, I can come back in here and take a look at all the different properties in the app, and I can see, lo and behold, there I am, the contact user. So those values are then set, and you can use them in subsequent pages as the application unfolds. So that's a real quick way to make a people picker with the Office 365 uh, user search capability. So you now may be wondering, well, how did I get the ability to call that connector called Office 365 users right here? It's really easy to add. All you need to do is go up to View, pick Data Sources, and you'll see I already have it added here, but I can just pick Add Data Source, and it's going to be in your list. Office 365 users right there. If you don't see it in your list, go up to New Connection and look for Office 365 users and then authenticate to it. And now that connector will be available for you to use in your Power Apps too. I hope this Power App and the video helps you out. See you next time.